Your health is my business. I see your point, but this is serious. Who smiled warm? Stemmer, did you need something? As a new dream dawned for the adventuring trio, they returned to the depths of the formerly sunken city, where fortune was found behind every crumbling wall as a bulging keg bursts with free flowing ale. That is, we broke our way into more of the ruins below, and in one of them, the wordsmith beheld a glimmering gizmo, a wonder among a sea of wonders. Alas, the gizmo lay beyond his grasp. You saw some kind of gizmo but couldn't get it? A door bars the way, locked by some confounded means. Moreland contemplated explosives, but Abaddon thought the odds of crushing the gizmo under rubble were too high. For once, the shard counter skepticism might be warranted. The old wordsmith's hopes were dashed, until a friend with a knack for performing the impossible returned from beyond the sands. Might I persuade you to venture beneath the desert once more? I'll see what I can do. Where is this place? Once you're down there, take a ride at the statue of the giant man. The ruin rests beside a metal tower. And so our heroine went forth, and the wordsmith's hopes went with her. Okay, there's the giant statue that Stemmer mentioned. The ruin should be nearby. A ruin beside a metal tower. The gizmo Stemmer's after should be inside. I'm in the right place. Now, where's that gizmo? There. That must be the gizmo. Looks like this door needs a code to open. I should check around the room, see if I can find anything that...
Hmm. So the gizmo is actually called an ornament. Found one of these in another ruin. It sounds like there are more out there. And it looks like there's part of a code. Maybe for the door. I better keep looking around. Maybe I can find the rest of it. Might lead to another part of the ruin. But I'll get to it. There's an opening at the top of the fence. Could be a way in if I can find a way to get up there. Should be able to reach the opening now. Made it. Oh, I'm back outside. What else is up here? I was trying to pull that. The ornaments were part of something called the Knights of Lights holiday promotion. A way to celebrate old world holidays by changing the holograms of their ground. How? Oh. Part of the codes here too. I should have what I need to open the door. Got it. Time to head back up to Stemmer. Maybe we can figure out how to make this thing work.
The Nora returned, but did she bring tidings of triumph or misfortune? I got the gizmo, and it's not the only one I found. Here. The old wordsmith, a keen spark in his eye and gratitude in his heart, held aloft the gizmo that had eluded him. It's called an ornament, actually. Part of a set. Huh. You know, some delvers tapped a ruin north of here recently and said they saw a trinket like this one, beyond their reach. Might have been another one of these ornaments. That's worth looking into. And so the mystery of the ornament deepened. For what purpose were these trinkets designed? Something called the Knights of Light's Holiday Promotion. It's a way the old ones celebrated special occasions, I think. Like feasts? Kind of. I think a holiday marked a seasonal event? And so does every feast in the claim. There's the feast of the first keg, the feast of fermentation, the all hops feast. All about ale, huh? I guess I shouldn't be surprised. Anyway, these ornaments could supposedly change the lights above ground, but I'm not sure how. Hmm. I recognize this market. Saw the same on a little device we unearthed. Here. It might be able to turn on the lights. Mm, time to find out. Which one should I try first? Let's put this one up. By our heroine's word, the lights would dazzle the sky. Ah, this must have been the feast of the crescent moon. They couldn't have celebrated every crescent moon, could they? By the forge, that'd be a lot of feasts. 